All right, welcome to the Saturday morning active team training. Uh, to this morning, we have the the privilege. We have a a, a real treat ready for you this morning. Uh, Trisha Albrechtson is joining us this morning to to talk to us about uh, setting big goals and really how to create some deep value for yourself um, and for others. Um, so. Uh, without any further ado, I will uh, let Tricia take over the training and uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning, Tricia. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. All right. Let me just do a couple of things here and get our screen share going. Well, hold on here. It's going to bump me to the middle. I want to start here so that you can really understand. So today I am telling you a little bit about actives, but I'm really telling you a little bit about life. I want you to be able to set goals with a whole new premise today. I'm going to show you a system. I'm all about systems and charts and being able to you know repeat things over and over and not just kind of hit and miss successes i want to be able to really course my life and know where i'm going but i want you to be able to set your goals and really achieve them how many people do we know that set resolutions or set goals and three weeks later they're right back to the same old humdrum right back in the rut where they were right back doing the same thing they were doing before they're cheating on this they're cheating on that they're excusing themselves this time because they're going to do better tomorrow it's all the rationalizations that we've always done so today i want to help you set goals where you're not rationalizing yourself out of it and you're not cheating and you're getting to your goals in a way that is what you really set out to in the beginning. So you've heard people talk about finding your why. I'm just gonna touch on this just briefly. Why are you doing something? You really should figure, you need to find that word, that, that core foundational word that for you moves you to action. And it should be something that rises some sort of an emotion in you. Um, it can be different for both spouses. I know when we found our wives initially in this industry, my husband wanted freedom more than he wanted food. He wanted out of his job. He wanted to see our kids again. He was literally working before they got up in the morning until after they went to bed at night, and he wasn't seeing them. He didn't have time to go do anything that he wanted to do. He didn't have time to be with his loved ones. So he wanted freedom. He wanted freedom from his job. And that was the thing that moved him. For him, I wanted security. We had a, a business, we were self-employed. So some months we had money and some months we didn't have money and some months we had money and sometimes I was tired of the roller coaster. I needed, I needed, for, I needed security so that when people needed money, I had it. <laughs> I was tired of getting phone calls or letters in the mail that uh, I couldn't answer. I, I didn't know what to tell them when there's no money there and they are asking for money and everybody has their hand out. It's really, really frustrating. So my emotional place was security and I needed that. Figure out what your word is, but it has to have some sort of an emotion behind it. Mine was kind of panic and Eric's was kind of anger, <laughs> but you work with whatever emotion it rises. There's no right or wrong. These are some examples of good ones that I've heard. Family may or may not be. That's why it's at the bottom of the list. And it's not because it's not super important. It's the highest, most important thing in my world right now. Family is everything to me. And I know it is to most of you. But if it's not bringing up an emotional reason why you have to build it, family may not be your word. Okay. It might be a reason that you're doing what you're doing, but it might not be your word. Now, if your parents are old and have no retirement and no hope and they need to go into a home or dad's gonna die and he needs to get help that's gonna maybe drive you okay because it's that that emotion of i have to help my parents but if it's just that i really want to create a better life for my kids i want to create a better life for my family i love them so much that may not be enough to move you so Figure out, this is a homework thing for you. If you haven't figured out your driving word, figure it out. It's gotta be something you want just as much as you want air, as you want water, as you want food. 
You've got to need this thing. And then when you create your goals, I want to help you dive deep with those goals so that, like I said, you're not rationalizing and you're not quitting on yourself before the goal is achieved. We want to anchor those goals deep inside of you, deep inside of your soul, so that it becomes one with who you are and you're eating, sleeping, breathing it so that you can hit that goal. Like I said, this might apply to actives, it might apply to other parts of your life, but hopefully this will be something that you can use to take yourself to a better place. So when you are assessing a new goal, I want you to write these down, get these into a place where you're looking at goals from these five angles every time you set a goal. What is the inner value to you personally if you achieve this goal? What is the outer value to the world around you? What are the future benefits if you achieve this goal? And what are the extended benefits? This is the ripple effect. This is how is it going to radiate out if you achieve your goal? And then the last one is what will happen if you don't? And I want you to really think through very specifically on each of these questions. So we're going to go through them a little deeper. So inner value to you personally, this is the first one. How is it going to make you feel if you reach this goal? I want you all to think of a goal that's on your list for 2020. And I want you to kind of go through the motions with me here on this, on your particular goal. This is specific to each one of you. It's going to be a different journey for each one of you. But how will it make you feel if you achieve it? What's it going to feel like? What's your life going to feel like? What are you going to feel like um, about yourself? How does it change your self-image if you achieve this goal? What's the impact that it would have on your life? And what is the value to the world around you? How are other people reacting if you hit this goal? Does the world give anything back to you that maybe it didn't before? What kind of things are you going to draw to yourself if you achieve this goal? When you have a deep goal, it literally impacts you and everyone around you when you achieve it. And I don't know if everybody on here has achieved a goal to that enormity, but I want to let you know when we've risen to the top of companies in the past, it changes everything. It's, it's hard to put into words how it changes, but all of a sudden you have choices that you didn't have before and you have an impact on the world that you didn't have before. And you have an interaction with other people relationally that you didn't have before. And it, it literally changes your whole perspective of the world. When you change yourself or you have a goal that you really, really hit, it changes everything. If you lose 100 pounds, it's going to change everything. It's going to change how you interact with your children and your grandchildren. It's going to change how you look in the mirror. It's going to change how people look at you and how people react to you when you're in public. And I hate to say that, but reality is when you feel better about yourself, people react differently to you. So whatever your goal is, when it's a big goal, it's going to have an impact all around you. What are the future benefits? What does your future life look like? If you're 100 pounds lighter or you're financially set, what does your future life look like? And how would you feel? What would that do for you personally to know that you set this big goal and you nailed it, you hit it? It's a great feeling, I have to tell you. So think about how you're going to feel when that happens. How would things change for you? And how would your family, your friends, and the world look? How would they look at you? How would they respond to you? And then think about the extended benefits. This is the thing that sometimes people don't think about, but there's always a ripple effect when we do things for good, for bad. There's always a ripple effect. So everything you say in the world and everything you do is going to impact people. So keep that in mind as you go out and about today 
or even if you're home with yourself, with your family, even if it's self-talk, those things are having ripple effects. If you start out bumping your toe on the bed and you tell yourself, oh, it's gonna be a bad day, I would bet my breakfast that you're gonna have something else happen that is part of that ripple effect and you're gonna have another thing that's part of a bad day. So make sure that the ripple effect that you're starting is positive and that you're sending out things that you want to impact the world in a good way because this is gonna impact your family. It is gonna impact your circle of influence. It's gonna impact potentially future generations depending on what you do. And how can this impact the world? Most of us don't think about that. We're like, oh, I wanna be an A3. <laughs> oh, I wanna lose 10 pounds. Oh, I wanna eat healthier. Oh, I wanna you know, take an hour of my time and do something philanthropic in the world. We set these goals and we're good for them for three weeks. <laughs> Some of us are even good for them for 90 days. 90 days is our benchmark. Eric and I, when we talk about people's intention with the business specifically, anybody can run hard for 90 days. It's the people that are still running after 90 days that we know are gonna hit the top. We know they've, they've found their niche and they're gonna be successful. It's that after 90 days that's critical. So what if you don't do it? If you don't lose 10 pounds, you don't lose 10 pounds. You still fit in your clothes. You just don't fit in that pair of jeans that you've been hoping you'd fit into. But it's okay, you didn't fit into them last week. Maybe I'll do it next month, right? If I don't do it. But what if you don't do it? What if your health literally takes a toll because of your weight, because of the way that you're eating, because of the time and the stress that you're spending at your job and you have a heart attack? Statistics are high on how many people literally have a heart attack either right before or right after they retire. And it's because they've had this stress, this time allotment to something that has just literally eaten up their life and it's taken a toll on their heart. So you have to think about what will happen if you don't do it. What if you don't lose weight? What if you don't hit the top ranks of the company? What if you don't tell your neighbor about actives? Could it negatively impact their life? How will it affect your close circle of influence if you're not having time with them? I know friends, I'm, I'm right at that point where I'm close to being an empty nester. I have one more home and I'm, treasuring every minute with her because I know this time's going to go so fast. But my son that's a Marine that's out serving a mission, my daughters that are married, if I didn't spend the time with them as they were growing up, they would all be going their own ways and starting their own families and flying. And I know friends that are lucky to talk to their married children once a month because their kids are just off busy living their lives. Well, what if they had spent time with them and really created those relationships? I'm so, so grateful that I had time with my children, that we've been able to work from home doing network marketing, and I've been able to have that quality time with my kids. It's quality and quantity. Don't kid yourself. <laughs> Both count. And my children want to be with me. And it's the greatest joy of my life that they choose to call me, that they choose to just drop by. Yesterday, I got a text from my son that was lengthy and loving, and he's not supposed to text me except for Mondays, but he had something come to mind and he texted me. And that meant the world because it was out of the norm. It was out of his, his normal when he would reach out to me, and he did. And my daughter, that's my oldest daughter, brought her two children by just because they hadn't seen us in a few days, and they wanted to see me, Ma, and Papa. And it was so joyful. And then I, I took my youngest, and we went out for a little bit and ran some errands and got some lunch. And my second daughter found out that we were in her neighborhood, and she wanted to come join us. And it's just this joyful feeling that you cannot buy. You cannot, if you have not put in the time, you cannot force your married kids to come back to you. And so, sorry, I'm digressing. It's a tangent, but that's the importance of doing things right in your life. I'm not saying I've been a perfect parent. Please don't get me wrong on that. I'm human like everybody else, but the timing I got right, they want to spend time with us. 
So what's the effect that it's going to have on your close circle of friends and your, your, your people around you? What's the ripple effect if you don't do it? If you don't take care of your health and you're in a place where you can't spend time with people and you can't even get up to be part of family events or you don't have time to be part of family events, it's going to have a ripple effect. Okay, so we're gonna go through some of these and just kind of show you as an example. So if you have a health goal, whether it be well, uh, weight or eating or exercising more, whatever it is, this is a very general, I want you to go through these very specific, but I can't do very specific on you because I don't know what your, what your reason is. I don't know what your goal is. So what's the inner value if you improve your health as a whole? You're gonna have more energy, more glow, more vitality. You're gonna feel better, you're gonna look better, and you're gonna feel better standing in front of that mirror, right? What's the outer value? You might just turn a few heads. Feels kind of good when it happens every once in a while. You might have better acceptance in a relationship. Sometimes health causes rifts in relationships and people start to drift just a little bit because of something that somebody's choosing to do in their health. So it might help with that. What's the future benefit? You might live longer. <laughs> Let's face it. If you're taking care of your body, you just might live longer. You might not. You might get hit by a bus tomorrow. But taking the right supplements, doing the right exercises, getting enough sleep, drinking enough water, eating right, you know, we know what we're supposed to be doing might give us more time with loved ones, might give us a chance to hold that grandbaby that's born at the end of your line of grandchildren or hold a great grandchild. I am the youngest of my family, so I'm literally about a year away, maybe two years, depending on when he gets married and settles down, from being a great, great aunt. And I laugh at that because I'm like, I need like a little white hairdo and a little cream because I shouldn't be young and active as a great, great aunt. But my goal is to be great, 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 maybe great. Aunt Trish. And so when I'm older and needing that cane, because I want to live long and healthy. So when I'm 99 and I finally need a little cane to support me, so I won't need it till then, I plan on being great, 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 great aunt. So what are you doing to live long? What are the extended benefits? Your children might learn to eat healthier. They might just raise their kids eating healthier and it might change the health of your family for generations. Maybe it's supplements, maybe it's your pattern of living, maybe it's your choice of eating, maybe it's your exercise patterns, but kids pick up on those things and they choose to live their life usually, not always, but usually along a similar pattern to what's been shown them. What if you don't do it? More time at the hospital, sick, pain, more medications, miss family events, just don't feel like being part of things, you're gonna miss out on so much of life. Okay, let's take it another direction because some of you are having wealth goals, you're having goals set in your business, which is I hope on all of your radars, we're in actives, right? We wanna activate every part of our being and financial is a huge part of why people join these companies. We're drawn to actives because of the amazing technology and the amazing products. But let's face it, we're all here hoping to make some income and change our finances. So if you're setting a wealth goal, if you're setting a financial goal, what's the inner value that you're gonna create as you hit those top levels here at the company? You're gonna have peace of mind. You're gonna have an abundant mindset. Your stress is going to be less. Your ability to live your best life is going to be enhanced. It's still up to you how you make your daily choices, but your inner is going to be very, very blessed as you reach those goals. The outer value, you're gonna be the one that's throwing the fun events, that draws people to you. People are gonna to want to be around you. I, I promise you, when you get to those levels, everybody wants to be your friend, so. It's for better or worse, but you're going to be that person that is able to bless the world. 
you're the one that's going to be able to, you know, I don't know if you can see it, but it says the world becomes your playground. <laughs> and it truly does. I had a friend that had hit a top of another company. And I remember a comment he made to us one day. He's like, every day we get to wake up and decide where do we want to be today? Where do we want to live today? What, what kind of impact do we want to have on the world today? Most people get up and have to choose what color socks to put on. <laughs> His whole world had gotten this big. It was no longer compartmentalized to what I'm going to wear and what route I'm going to take to work. His decisions were vast. And sometimes they just pull out a globe. They had one of those round spinny globes and they just spin it and let their kids stop it with their finger. And wherever it stopped, that's where they were going to go that week. Because when you have those choices, they were living at a whole different level where they could literally take their kids, they were homeschooling them, and if they wanted to learn about China, they'd go to China and let their kids learn hands-on. It was amazing to watch how their world had grown. What are the future benefits? Those kind of experiences. One of my greatest joys of all the things that we've experienced and all the places we've been and all the amazing memories that I have with my family, one of my greatest that I treasure and will for my whole life is taking my mother to Hawaii. She had never been to Hawaii and she was almost 80 years old and she loves beautiful things and she loves the ocean and she loves, she just really, really wanted to go. And we were able to take my children, my mother and go and spend a week in Hawaii going all the different places that I wanted to show her and not thinking about expense, just being able to go and experience the things that were so important. And some of you've heard this story, but I'm going to tell it really quick. I think I've got a minute. Um, we're sitting at dinner on the last night and every time I've been to Hawaii, I always book the 10 or 11 o'clock flight because then you can fly all the way home in the night, you sleep. We bought our kids pillows at Costco while we were there and they had their pillow they were gonna sleep on the plane on the way home so you can get everything out of that last day and then go to sleep and wake up home so we had it all timed so we're sitting at this beachside uh, restaurant we've got the little umbrellas in our drinks and they're bringing us this amazing food we're watching the sunset over the ocean it was just this surreal perfect ending to our, our week and Eric looked at me and he goes, so which flight are we on? What, what time is our flight? I said, you know, I don't know. I think it's 10, 30, 11, you know, whatever we usually do. And I pulled out my phone and I looked at it. And it said 8.03. And it was 7.40. <laughs> and we were in swimsuits at the beach, not packed, not at the airport said, well, honey, I think we are missing our flights. <laughs> it's not easy to reroute seven flights. And my mom was routing from Phoenix to Salt Lake. So she had two flights that we had to reroute. And our rental car was due back. Like we had all of these things. And my husband looked at me and he goes, you know what? They're going to send us another check next month. Just do what it takes and let's get home. So we bought more tickets, we got a hotel, we got another rental car, we rerouted my mom's flight. It was a lot of logistics, but it takes the stresses out when you can just enjoy the experiences and you have choices and you have comfort. Money doesn't buy you happiness. Money buys you comfort and choices. The happiness is up to you. The extended benefits, you can be a philanthropic person affecting the world. You can literally be that person that says, where do we want to bless today? Okay, this place in the world needs netting because they have a malaria issue. Let's create a way to get nets so that we can save children's lives in this part of the world. Or let's affect this part of the world. Ooh, they need fresh water. Let's pay to have a well built in that city, in that village so that the girls don't have to carry earthen pots on their heads and crack their skulls. And my kids have been able to have those experiences of let's have an effect on the world. Generations are going to be affected. I watch my daughter that's married now giving philanthropic service how she can, when she can. They're on a shoestring budget and yet she's giving. And I know a lot of that came because of the way that she was raised. And 
the things that she saw other people doing. It's not all that, that we taught her. She got to see people all over the world giving and giving and giving, and it's now just a part of who she is. How is that going to affect future generations? Successful thinking comes when you hit these top levels of the company. Is that going to affect your children and the way they speak, the way that they think, the way that they teach their children? You better believe it. What if you don't? What if you don't? So many people don't have a plan and they're living in stress. They're living in reliance on others. They're not having experiences because their life is limited to their box that they've created, their, their rut that they live in, the job that they go to, the same six people they interact with. They come home and have dinner and go to bed and, you know, watch Netflix in between. Um, but they're missing out on things because they have this J-O-B. J-O-B stands for just above broke or just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we want you to live. We want you to make your goals consciously. Don't just make a goal because somebody says, hey, what level do you want to be? Oh, I want to be an A3. Oh, I want to be an A6. Oh, I want to be an A8. Dig deeper. Figure out if that's going to affect how it's going to affect you on those five levels. And then when the time comes, and you have a chance to jump on a call, reach out to a new person, sign someone up, talk to a neighbor, do these things that are going to help build you to reach that A8, you're going to do them rather than saying, oh, my favorite show's on TV, I'll do it later. Because when you know the deeper value of what you have to gain and lose by doing that goal, you're going to do it. If your goal is to lose 20 pounds and it's going to affect the length of your life and your time with your grandchildren and being able to lift your grandchildren and play with them, you're going to forgo that cookie or that dessert that maybe you would have rationalized otherwise. So do these steps. It only takes a few minutes, but if you'll do these with these goals that you really, really want to hit, your choice of accomplishing it goes way, way up. You are in control of your future. Every day we have decisions that we make that are either going to get us closer to our goal or take us further away from our goal. Understanding the deep value that is in reaching that goal is going to help you be strong and make those decisions. Setting a goal is the first step toward a better tomorrow. And then we just have to keep making the right decisions step by step to reach that goal. Guys, we have everything here at Actives to be able to activate every portion of our life, our health, our time, our finances, our relationships, all of these things that create wealth. Wealth is not about how much money is in your bank account. Wealth is having a balance of all of these things in life that are so important, so important. And they're all equally important. So, Use actives as the, the vehicle to get you to your goals, but you have to know what those goals are. All right, there we go. All right, well, it's been my pleasure to spend a few minutes with you this morning. We are at the top of the hour. I challenge you all to take those five steps, go sit down with a specific goal or maybe two, and let's figure out what the deep value is in that goal for you so that you can start to change your life. Let's end 2020 and make it the best year of your life. Back to you, Jerry. Oh, wow. That was amazing, Tricia. Thank you very much. Um, you know, this is just something I'm definitely going to spend more time on over this weekend. Um, so I just want to <clears throat> say thank you, Tricia, for, for all the, the, the nuggets and words of wisdom. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. On a Saturday morning, we really appreciate your time. Um, the plan right now for next Saturday is I'm going to be delivering a training on how to set up an account and get your customers and distributors going through Global Connect. Um, so I've dug into this a little bit this week. It's an amazing program, an amazing platform. Um, so I hopefully it'll bring a lot of value for next week. And uh, thank you very, very much, Tricia, again, for, for bringing the value that you brought today. Uh, have a good weekend, everybody, and enjoy your, enjoy your Saturday. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, Trish. Bye. Love you. Thank Thanks you so much. Thank you.